And now, how we roll with friction. So you may recall before we had a ramp at angle theta, and we had the cylinder here. And we all agree there's going to be a gravitational force down. And we probably all agree that there's a normal force pushing up to keep the uh, cylinder from falling into the ramp. But I also said there's a frictional force back like that, a static friction force while it is rolling. So let's think about that one a little more. These are very hard to conceptualize. All right, so usually it's best to take your problem and then imagine there's no friction. Think about what would happen and then bring in friction. That's one way to figure out which way a friction force is going to be. So here I have my cylinder. I'm going to put it on the ramp. And now let's imagine the ramp has no friction. It's icy slick ramp. What's this going to do? It's just going to slide. It's not going to rotate. Why would it rotate? Right? It's just going to slide down. But as I pull it down that way, it's sliding, I can feel a friction force pushing it back. It's dynamic in that case because I'm sliding. But if in the limit I slow down, it's the same direction. There's a friction force pushing back up the ramp. And I can tell because I imagine what it'd do if there's no friction force. Now, you may say, what would happen, really, if you had no friction on this ramp? Wouldn't it still rotate? Because around this axis of rotation, you would still have a gravitational force creating a torque. But the problem is, there's no reason for that to be an axis of rotation anymore. The only reason we set that as the axis of rotation in the last uh, board is we said, oh, well, we know friction is going to make it rotate around that axis. But if you take away friction, there's really no reason to set that as a rotation axis. It's just going to move according to its center of mass, and it's just going to slide down. So I can feel the friction force pushing back. That's all I'm going to give you for understanding why there's a friction force there. Let's just keep going. OK, so what's going to be different then here is to include the friction force, we have to rotate about a different axis so that it actually creates a torque. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for rotation um, about the center of mass. So instead of saying it's rotating here, we're going to think it's rotating around the center of mass. And you may say, but it's really rotating here, but it's also really rotating here. Right? And we'll solve for the translational part with our standard sort of translation from rotation to uh, translation for rolling, if you understood any of that. OK, so to deal with the friction force, we actually have to do one uh, translational Newton's law. We have to say the sum of the forces equals ma uh, down the ramp. Because we've got to deal. We don't really have a value for this friction force. It's not just mg. Uh, we don't, can't just use mg to get it. So we say, OK, down the ramp, sum of the forces. We're going to call um, uh, the gravitation we're going to call down positive. Right? And this is the positive direction. So we know this is mg sine theta. So we have mg sine theta positive, because it's down the ramp, minus the friction force, minus f static friction. And those equal the acceleration we're looking for, ma, the acceleration of the center of mass, ma cm. Okay. So we could solve that for the friction force, fs. The friction force just equals mg sine theta minus ma See how. There you go. And now we're going to do Newton's second law for rotations around the center of the uh, cylinder torque. Some of the torques is I alpha. All right. So now about this axis, um, who all is uh, making a torque? Let's see. Mg is no longer making a torque because the axis, the distance from the axis to where the force is applied is zero. So no torque from mg. Uh, the normal force uh, is not making a torque. The r vector has a length from the edge to the center, but the angle between the normal force and the r vector is zero. Or the angle is zero, so the cross product is zero. So in this case, the only one that has an actual torque is the friction force, Fs. OK, so we would say then it is. Um, uh, let's see, Fs is this. So yeah, it's a R. So it's at the radius R. R uh, times Fs, which is mg sine theta, the friction force, minus macm, uh, times the sine of the angle between them. Well, that's uh, 1. Right? The angle is 90 degrees. The sine of 90 degrees is 1. So it's at right angles. So there's your torque equals I 
So now we're rotating this thing um, around its center of mass, right? So we'll just say ICM for now. And times alpha. Well, we'll use our standard since we've already written this part in terms of the acceleration of the center of mass. And since that's what we're trying to solve for, we'll go ahead and just make that substitution. It's the acceleration of the center of mass um, over big R, over the radius. Okay. Where again, the mass here is this thing is m, and the radius is r. Let's see. Oh, it's a little m, I guess. Sorry. There you go. All right, then what we see we could do is we could bring this r over here, right, like that. That was fun. And we could solve for ACM by just saying, all right, so here you've got uh, I C M, and then this term would be plus M R squared times the center of mass. There we go, that's that side. And then the other side, what was left? M R squared G sine theta. This may not be the most efficient algebraic way to get this answer, let's see. Uh, and then we bring this underneath. And we see the acceleration of the center of mass equals m r squared g sine theta over the moment of the center of mass plus m r squared. And you see, this is exactly what we got before. Remember, so if this is a cylinder, this becomes m r squared. m r squared plus m r squared is 2 m r squared. The m r squareds go away. So for a cylinder, a solid cylinder, it's 1 half g sine theta. And for a sphere, it's 5 7 g sine theta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Except, I'm sorry, it's 2 thirds. For, for a solid cylinder, it's 2 thirds. Because this is 1 half mr squared, 3 halves, upside down, 2 thirds. But the point is, it's the same answer. So we can do it around this axis of rotation, where the gravity creates a torque, we get one answer. We do it around this axis of rotation, friction creates a torque, same answer. Of course, we have to have the same answer. There's only one reality. But it is showing you that we're describing all these forces correctly. So you can describe, solve these problems around either center of rotation.